Welcome to the UAP Customers Webinar Series, Episode 2, Composite Door Locks and Cylinders. Today we'll look at some commonly used terms and also locks and associated products in relation to composite doors. Lock, a mechanism for keeping a door fastened. This image is of a single point lock. A multi-point lock, sometimes known as an aspag or an aspagnolet. It's a mechanism for keeping the door fastened. It has multiple points along the frame, making it more secure. We offer both standard multi-point and auto multi-point locks. How do you operate a standard multi-point lock in a composite door? So to lock the door, close the door, lift the lever handle upwards to the full extent of travel and turn the key or the thumb turn. To unlock, turn the key or thumb turn and to press the handle downwards to the full extent of the travel and open the door. Um, how does this differ though with an auto lock? So to lock and close the door, you just turn the key or the thumb turn. And to unlock, turn the key or thumb turn, depress the handle downwards to the full extent of travel and open the door. So what is an auto lock and why would you use an auto lock, which sometimes is also called a slam lock? Well, an auto lock automatically engages the upper and lower locking points when the door is closed, removing the necessity to lift the lever handle. This works because a trigger in the actuator is depressed by a plate onto the frame, which drives the top and bottom bolts into their extended positions. So why would you use an auto lock? One reason is that the top of a composite door can bow inwards towards the building over a period of time. If it's left on the latch, this is a common reason for callbacks on composite doors and engaging the bolts helps to prevent this. Another reason is a on a fire door. Please watch the fire door series of webinars for further details on this. So this image is of a bolt, um, which is a locking point that it extends from the door into the frame to hold it closed. And this image shows a hook, which is also a locking point that extends from the door into the frame and also holds the door closed. It differs from the bolt in that it is hook shaped, as you can see, and rather than it being straight. This image is of the center case. This is the central part of a multi-lock containing the operating mechanism and the spindle and the cylinder. So this image shows two things, the locking point, the one on the far left. So this is part of the lock that secures the door to the frame. And then the other images are of keeps or sometimes known as receivers. And this is the part fitted to the door frame that receives the keep and, and keeps the locking points within the frame. This is a latch. This is part of the lock that secures the door in the closed position, though it's not necessarily locked. So now we're looking at some locks that are suitable um, for composite doors. The locks that we find suitable are the Crime Beater, the XL Crime Beater, and the Crime Beater 220 Pro. So let's look at the Crime Beater first. That lock is available in 35, 45 and 55 mil back set, set variation. And they're also available in steel, stainless steel, aluminium or UPVC faceplates. The center case has a latch, a deadbolt and dual spindles. And the top and bottom locking points can either be with the bolts or hooks. The hooks both travel downwards on a crime beater lock. And this is the only variant of lock available with a slam locking option. So there are different types of keep available for the crime beater. The standard option would be a CRB 0004KE, and that's for locks with bolts, and the CRB 0005KE for locks with hooks, so two different keep availability. We also have narrow options, so we've got a, a code of CRB 0013KE and CRB 0014KE for the center keeps, and for locks with bolts, and XCKS for locks with hooks. So the XL crime beat lock is available in a 35 and 45 mil back set, so not the 55 mil like the crime beater. They're available with steel and UPVC face plates, and the center case has a latch and hook and dual spindles. So the top and bottom locking points can either be bolts or hooks as well. And the top and bottom locking points that are hooks travel in op opposing directions, 
rather than the same direction on the standard crime beta. The differing kinds of keeps that are available are some standard options for centre keeps and for locks and bolts and, and also for the hooks. And we do have a narrow option as well for this. And we've got some codes for the narrow option. So the Crime Beta 220 Pro locks are only available in the 45 mil back set. And it's only available with a steel faceplate. The center case has a latch and a deadbolt. And the top and bottom locking points are hooks that travel in opposing directions. One set of dedicated keeps is available for the Crime Beta 220 Pro. And that is a CRB 220 Pro keep set. So the bolt option is a linear bolt, which has more flexibility um, and a wider installation tolerance maybe than the hook bolts. And they have a very smooth lock in action. And the hook bolts are often perceived as being maybe more secure than a linear bolt, which is true for um, more flexible, maybe UPVC doors. But hook bolts can make the door installation slightly more challenging as there's less fe flexibility and they do require a very accurate alignment with the frame keeps in order to work very effectively. So here we have an image of a cylinder, what many people refer to as a lock, but it is actually called a cylinder or sometimes a barrel. And that is um, the locking mechanism within the door and the device actually where you insert your key. This is used primarily as a locking medium to operate a lock case with a Euro shaped hole. And in this image, you can see some very common lock profiles. So Euro profile being one of the most popular and um, the profile name often denotes the shape of the cylinder, as you can see. Euro profile cylinders are predominantly used in our multi point locks, which we've just looked at. But other cylinder styles are round or oval in shape, as you can see from this. So another option would be a cylinder guard. It's an additional device that wraps around the cylinder to provide additional protection against attack. So this is a key key cylinder and this a key key cylinder means that it's a cylinder in which a key can be used both internally and externally by the householder to lock and unlock the door. This particular image is one of a thumb turn cylinder. So this cylinder has a key externally for operation, but a knob or a thumb turn, um, as we can call it, internally to operate it. These are commonly used on doors fitted to apartments or on fire doors. They allow the occupant easy and quick access out um, in the event of an emergency. So a key to like cylinder, um, some, to, to explain really what that term means, this would enable you to use the same key for two or more cylinders instead of requiring different keys. So you could have the same key for a pair of cylinders, maybe that would be fitted in a set of double doors or the same key to, be, to access your property from your front and back door. So master key, uh, a master keyed, if you like. A master key system means that it is possible for people who are authorized to access different doors within a system using just one key. So, for example, a tenant in sheltered accommodation has their own individual flat door key, which will not open any other door in the building. However, the caretaker could have a master key to operate all of the locks in the building. And this means that they only need to carry one key in order to access all of the site. So frequently composite doors have an edge banding to make the edge of the door look more attractive. And in this image, you can see one of our locks with a white wraparound faceplate. So what is a spindle? It's the square metal bar that passes through the door, connecting the handles together, and it operates the locking mechanism. You can have single spindle, dual spindle, and these allow the lock to be operated in different ways by the handle. They are seen as square holes in the center case of the lock, one in case of a single and two in case of a dual. And what are the differences between a split or a solid spindle? So a lock where the solid spindle is operable from inside and outside by the use of a lever handle once the cylinder has been operated. And the split spindle would require you to use the key once again to retract the latch from the external side. But the operation internally is a solid spindle. So the benefit of the split spindle is that nobody could walk into the property without using a key. 
So what about inline handles, um, sort of out and offset handles? Well, the inline handles have levers at the same height internally and externally. So they are used with a solid spindle. And where offset handles have different lever heights, they can be used with dual spindle locks. So the final image that we're going to uh, have in this particular episode is the escutcheon. It's a protective or ornamental plate used around a keyhole or a handle. So thank you very much for watching um, episode two of the composite lock door locks. Part three will be on composite door hardware.